So I was driving around the other day listening to Birdland, a lesser known band once championed by John Peel, and suddenly I noticed that the N-word is blasting itself out of my speakers. I realised this was a cover of Rock and Roll Nigger by Patti Smith. As I understand it, the notion behind this song is to somehow appropriate the N-word as a generic term for outsiders. To me, this seems like something of a privileged indulgence i.e. to take a word that was essentially thrust upon an entire race of people against their will and used as a way of dehumanising them, and say that it could somehow equally apply to people who willfully deviate from social norms via participation in subcultures, in this case, punk rock. As though being a punk, an identity which can be put on and taken off like a jacket, is somehow comparable to being black, an identity which can't. This also got me thinking in general about the use of racism as a shock tactic in music. I mentioned in my video on Screwdriver how there were a number of punk artists such as Sid Vicious and Susie Sue who used to embrace the superficial aspects of Nazism, but not the ideology. Lemmy from Motorhead similarly had a penchant for Nazi memorabilia, though was adamant that his interest was purely superficial, not ideological. Also, before going their separate ways to form the better known acts that are The Clash, The Damned and Generation X, Mick Jones, Rat Scabies and Tony James were all members of a band called London SS. Although it has been argued that SS was simply supposed to stand for street soldiers, it has also been admitted that the name was chosen as something of a shock tactic. Regarding Patti Smith, I find myself somewhat agreeing with Afropunk writer Camille Collins when she says... Mostly, I think as a mad scientist of punk, she wanted to experiment and poke around with something dangerous and combustible, like that nasty yellow ochre colour in the acrylic paint box. She wanted to dabble with one of the ugliest words in the English lexicon to see what she might fashion. Personally, I don't feel any particular desire to use these sorts of shock tactics, as, perhaps ironically, shocking people isn't all that much of a shock anymore. Also, I find myself asking, and now what? What do I do now I've shocked people? Is that a mission accomplished, or do I have some follow-up point I'm supposed to make now I've gotten people's attention? I'd be interested to know what people think. Do these sorts of shock tactics accomplish some sort of higher purpose? Are they too open to misinterpretation to be justifiable? Is shocking people in and of itself an achievement without it needing to make some sort of bigger point? Thanks for watching. Okay.